But we have been looking at the life of King David in the Old Testament. And I want you to understand that David's life advanced because he was faithful. And what we discovered about David last week was that he was faithful in seemingly meaningless areas, okay? And it was because of his faithfulness and natural things that God propelled him to a higher place. David was faithful in tending his father's sheep, right? And when God saw David's faithful heart, he said, if he's going to be faithful in taking care of his sheep like that, willing to risk his own life, when he shepherds my flock, the people of Israel, he'll do the same thing. And so God anointed him king over Israel. He was faithful in playing the harp, and that harp brought him before Saul, the king of Israel. David was faithful in obeying his father. And these are seemingly natural things, but, but when he was obeying his father, that's when he had the opportunity to go out and fight Goliath and when he fought Goliath that propelled him into a tremendous moment where he became known and the women even chanted in the street Saul's killed his thousands and David his tens of thousands and so what we learned last week is that if you're faithful in the natural things of life the little things of life uh, you know some what some would even call menial things it will very well might propel you into a moment where you you get to fight your Goliath, and God will give you more influence. And uh, you know, they say that Joel Osteen, Osteen, rather, you know, back when he his dad was still alive, that his job was to edit the messages. How many of you ever heard that? He would edit the messages, put the scriptures in, and edit those messages for television and all of that. And uh, that being faithful in that week after week helped him to learn how to preach according to his own testimony. And so let me just say that if we're faithful in the natural things, it'll help us in the long run. And so we're going to talk this morning about the second stage of David's life. Next week we're talking about the third stage of his life. But today I want to talk to you about how to be faithful in adversity. Now, I wish I could tell you that the moment you give your life to Jesus, you'll never have a difficult circumstance ever again. But how many of you know I would not be preaching the truth, right? Jesus said in this world we're going to have tribulations. But I'll tell you some good news today. It is only for a season. Tell your neighbor your adversity is only going to last for a little while, all right? It's only for a season. And if you handle it right, it will propel you to a higher place of influence. So let's read what James said to the early church about adversity okay James 1 and verse 2 and 2 and 4 he said this he said consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be notice what it says mature and complete not lacking any thing. How many have ever had some tests and trials in life? Oh my, my. Well, the reason for that is because God is wanting to bring you and me to maturity for when we have a place of influence. And we're going to see that this verse is aptly illustrated in the life of King David. When David came to a place of leadership in the kingdom, David was mature. He was complete. He was able to lead. And his influence was very powerful in the kingdom. And all of that was because he went through some very difficult circumstances circumstances in order to get there. In fact, let me just tell you that some of the world's greatest men and women have been saddled with disabilities and adversities, but they managed to overcome them. Let me share a few of those with you today. If you cripple him, you have Sir Walter Scott, who was a prolific poet and author. Lock him in a prison cell and you have a John Bunyan who wrote Pilgrim's Progress. Bury him in the snows of Valley Forge and you have a George Washington who would lead a nation to freedom. Raise him in abject poverty and you have Abraham Lincoln who would abolish slavery and stand for a united uh, nation. Uh, uh, 
strike him down with infantile paralysis and he becomes a Franklin D. Roosevelt who assisted a country back into economic health. Burn him so severely in a schoolhouse fire that the doctors say he will never ever walk again and you have a man named Glenn Cunningham who set a world's record in 1934 for running a mile in 4 minutes and 6.7 seconds. Definite genius comp composer. And you have a Ludwig von Beethoven. Have him or her be born black in a society filled with racial discrimination. And you have a Booker T. Washington, a Harriet Tubman, a Marian Anderson, a George Washington Carver, or, or a Martin Luther King. What I'm trying to say today is that all... All of these individuals faced tremendous adversity, but they did not allow that to destroy their life. They were faithful even in their time of adversity, and they overcame that. And uh, while I didn't observe all of their lives, I can assure you that they were faithful to apply themselves and do the thing that was in front of them. And I believe that it's a biblical principle, don't you? Faithfulness in adversity prepares you for influence in the kingdom. Amen. You're going to discover that those who are faithful were a couple slides down there, if you can. Uh, okay. You'll discover that those who are faithful in adversity will be given the opportunity for more influence in their life. And so uh, this morning I want to take a look at the, the season of adversity in David's life. And let me just say that there is a massive amount of biblical material about this season of David's life. It must have been a very important season. It covers 13 different chapters in the book of First Samuel, okay? But uh, we're not going to look at all of that today. Aren't you glad? We'd be here forever. Amen. But that's okay. But, but let me just give you a couple of things that I want you to know. First of all, King Saul was the king at that point of time. And God had raised up Saul, but he had disobeyed the Lord, and God had rejected him as king. And so God anointed David to be king. You can remember we talked about that last happened and he didn't really tell him when he would become king where he would be king how all that would happen how long he would have to wait he just said to David you're going to be king you're going to be a person of influence and David did not realize as a shepherd boy being anointed that he would have to go through a lot of adversity to finally get to that place of influence when he became king and so this is what I want to say to you this morning all right how many of you realize that many of times in your life, there's going to be a gap in the time between when God gives you the promise, hello, and when the promise comes to fulfillment, and sometimes along that pathway, my friend, there's going to be some adversity, but God's going to see you through it and make you in the process. So let's take a look for a moment at what happened to David. I could go through all the places and all the names that were covered in 13 chapters, but let me just give you the shortened version this morning, all right? Now imagine that you were David and you had to face these things. How many of you got a good imagination? Wave at me this morning, all right. Okay, first of all, there are two individual murder attempts on his life by someone in authority over him. His best friend and other known associates were ordered to kill him by the king. He's pursued by national armies that kill his friends, and even priests of God were in pursuit of him. He has to go search for a weapon in order to defend himself. He has to literally feign, okay, pretend like he was a madman drooling on himself in order to escape from his enemies. Man, that doesn't sound like too much fun. In the middle of all this, he loses by death his spiritual advisor and mentor, who was Samuel. He's estranged from his family. He's mistreated for asking for a favor. He has to live in a cave. Does that sound like a fun life to y'all? Very difficult, okay? He stops associating with kings and priests and people like that and begins to associate with malcontents, debtors, and others in this stress. His wife wife and children are taken captives of war and possibly raped or tortured or even killed and his own men even think of stoning him. How many of you think David went through some adversity? Come on. Those were difficult, difficult times for him. And, uh, 
And, you know, but, but you see, God did that because God wanted David to serve his purpose in his generation. And what God needed was a mature and a complete leader uh, for the people of God. And I'll tell you something, adversity, tests and trials will cause us to grow up in him. That's why it says for us to count it all joy when you face testing and some trials. It's not because it's fun, right? It's not because it feels good. It's because we know that God puts us in a place where he's growing us and maturing us and causing us to be all that we can be for his glory. How many of you are willing to say, Lord, whatever it takes, God, I've given you my life. If it takes adversity, then let me go through adversity. Not very many people will wave their hand at that. But let me tell you something. It's a powerful point anyway. Here's the challenge today. I challenge you to find any biblical character who did not go through some form or some type of adversity before they came to a place of influence, all right? Abraham had to wait years before he was able to finally received the promise of his own son. Isaac was bound and ready to be offered as a sacrifice before God provided a ram. Jacob was estranged from his family and cheated by Laban. Joseph was sold in the, in the slavery. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tested in a fiery furnace. Daniel was in a pit, a den of lions. Jeremiah was thrown in a pit. Elijah was pursued by Jezebel. John the Baptist had to live out in the desert and eat honey and wild locusts for, for, to sustain himself and Paul the Apostle was stoned and left for dead what I'm trying to say today church is that if you want a powerful place in the kingdom of God if you believe that God's gonna call you and use you then let me tell you something you got to expect a little bit of adversity tell your neighbor today I'm willing to expect adversity but by God's grace and by God's power I'm gonna come through it and my faith is not gonna be damaged in fact my faith is gonna come through and I'm gonna shine as gold in the kingdom of God. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise.